your appetites, as chairman of the awards committee of the Father and Son Association, I hereby announce the winner of the first prize in the junior division. For the best composition entitled, My Father, Gentlemen, I give you William Peck. <laughs> Get up. You've got to get I can't make a speech. Oh, of course you Bill, can. You say something, Bill. I don't Come know on. what to say. No. Come on, Bill. Don't be so bad. Get That's up. the boy. Oh. Go on, Bill. Go ahead. That a boy. Oh, gee. I can't make no speech. I don't know why they gave me the prize. I, I just got a swell dad and said so. <laughs> And uh, now, let us hear from the father, our esteemed fellow townsman, Henry Peck. I guess I'm kind of like Bill. Not much good at making speeches. <laughs> and uh, like him, I, I don't know why he got that prize. He probably copied the composition out of a, out of a book. <laughs> Seriously, though, he's a regular kid. And I'm proud of him. A little mischievous, sure. But what real boy isn't? The trouble with us fathers nowadays is that we often get the wrong slant on this discipline business. We don't our kids to death. Don't do this and don't do that. Now, here's the way I look at it. If your boy has never climbed your neighbor's apple tree or driven a cow into someone's garden or broken a window, I'd say, well, put lace pants on him.
There's no lace pants on my son. <laughs> Where's your dad? I'll bet he's proud of it. I certainly am. But what are you doing here, Duffy, at this hour? Telegram came to the house. I thought it might be important. Look there, Duffy. First award to William Peck. Oh, that's wonderful. It's gold, too, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Boy, oh, boy. It's surely it's gold. Yeah. Come on, son. We'll walk off that ice cream jag. Okay, Pop. You've, uh... You've never seen your Aunt Lily, have you, Bill? No, Dad, why? Well, I've invited your Aunt Lily and her son to come and visit us for a while. Oh, how old is her son? Oh, about your age. You see, things have been going pretty hard with her since her husband died. So I thought it'd be kind of nice to have them come and stay with us until, until things got straightened out for them. Well, what's the kid's name, Dad? Horace. Horace? Oh, well, I guess we can call him Butch or something. <laughs> sure. You in bed yet, Bill? Oh. Oh. Huh? Mm hmm Thanks, Bill. Oh. Hey. Looks as though we need a little feminine influence around here. Oh. I'll just go hang him up. Mm-hmm. See, Dad. Yes, Bill? Aunt Lily, our relation. Is she your sister? No. Your mother was Aunt Lily's sister. Oh. How old was I when Mother died? Oh, just a mm, little bit of a shaver. Excuse me, Mama. How much do you think my cousin weighs? Strip. Well, you got me there. Could use a heavy guy on the line. Good night, Bill. Hi, Dad. Yeah, we can call him Butch. Butch. Night, Alma. See you in the morning. Men women say I wrote a book about them once. In the first chapter on feminine foibles. I know, I know. So you've told me before. What'd you say his name was? Oh, I, I call him Butch. Butch. Yeah, yeah. Well, we need a big guy at the center. Big oh, boys. Come on, Come on Bill. Bill. 
Well, well, Lily. It's good to see you. Oh, Henry, you don't know what coming here means to us. Holy smoke. What did he say his name was? Butch. Uh-uh. And I suppose this is Billy. And this is Horace. How you doing, Uncle Henry? Glad to see you, Horace. Oh, hello, Horace. Glad to know you, Bill. Oh, Duffy, will you get those bags? Yes. Yeah. And will you carry we toy, Billy, dear? <laughs> <laughs> If that guy's name's Butch, mine's Clarabelle. It's me on the ass ray. <laughs> well, here we are. Such a beautiful home. Oh, Henry, it's so kind of you to share it with us. Oh, Lily, uh, this is Martha. Martha. I don't know what to say. I feel so grateful I could cry. Oh, don't be silly. All we want you to do is to consider yourself at home, as long as you're here with us. Is that all you want now, Mr. Taylor? That's all, Martha. Ah! Oh! Bill, you better take Elmer outdoors. Outdoors? Well, after all, he's not a house dog. Oh, he ain't feeling so that he's always been in the house. Now, don't you see that you've got Aunt Lily upset? Take him out. Three toy will be used to Elmer in no time. Why, tomorrow they'll probably be playing together. I don't think so, Billy dear. We toy has never liked big dogs. So, uh, supposing you boys tackle that luggage. And Bill, you show Horace his room. All right, Dad. Come on, Horace. Oh, it's such a lovely house, Henry. Simply adorable. This is yours. Gee, your room's great. Yeah. Here's my alarm clock. My radio. I won that right in the composition about my dad. I've been through a great deal, Henry. But at least I can be proud of my boy, Horace. I've made every sacrifice. And will gladly continue to, if necessary, to bring Horace up as a perfect gentleman. You've done very well, Lily. William seems like a nice boy, too. Oh, he's a grandkid. A little devilish sometimes, but always regular. I'm so glad. Really, I am, especially for William's sake. You've been so good to him, Henry. He, he doesn't know, does he? No, 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 no. You see, he is my son as far as I'm concerned. Just as much as if he were my own flesh and blood. <clears throat> and I know how he feels about me, too. He thinks I'm a swell dad. And I try to be just because he thinks so. I'm so glad that you feel that way about it. 
Horace doesn't know, does he? Why? Of course not. And you certainly don't think he'd tell if he did. No, but I guess it's safer this way. Got ants under my microscope. You have? Mm -hmm. I certainly like your room. You wouldn't want to change with me, would you? Are you kidding? I should say not. Mine's right next to my dad's over there. I wouldn't change for no money in the world. Horace, dear, it's only natural that Billy should have the better room, and only natural that he should want to keep it. We mustn't expect too much. You don't want to be selfish, like other little boys. Uh, take Horace out and have him meet the boys. First thing you want to do is to join Bill's gang. What's the name of the club now, uh... Oh, the Excelsior Club. It's the most exclusive club in town. Come on, b -b uh, Horace. Do you stutter? No, of course not. So long, Dad. So long, kids. See you tonight. Hey, come on, Horace. Bye, Uncle Henry. Oregon. Why, golly, you got me there. I never did get to Oregon. 
I know all the capitals, but I've only been in one state. Well, Duff, wasn't you a lumberjack in Oregon? No, that was Washington. Oh, yeah, I remember. Washington. Then what's the capital of... Hi, Bill! a nice game of tiddlywinks. Oh, you guys got him all wrong. He's all right. Maybe he's homesick or something. That's one in the crick named Clarabelle. the other boys. You told them not to play with me. Why? How should I know? Horace, how can you speak to me in that manner? Then why do you ask me so many questions? Because, darling, I'm just trying to help you. You see, when you're unhappy, mother is miserable. Peck, just leave him to me. You know, dear, you have just as much right in this house as he has. Put on over five pounds, and that's over a pound a week. But they are the best waffles I ever ate. With my special recipe. Do you have another cup of coffee? You know, it's a rare thing, Lily, to find a woman who can make a decent cup of coffee. Well, it's a rare thing to find a man who can appreciate a cup of coffee when he gets it. Billy, dear, don't do that. What are you up to now? Cut that out, Elmer. Billy, you know that isn't very fair to the animal. If you keep feeding him at the table, he'll continue to expect it, and you know that isn't very nice. I thought I told you to keep that dog outside. Well, you didn't say all the time. Billy, that sounded terribly fresh. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I'm uh, sure you didn't. But it sounded dreadful. Hey, what do you got there? What? You know where, in your pocket. What pocket? In your pants pocket. Handkerchief in the laundry bag and take another. Well, I only got it out yesterday. Will you please do what Aunt Lily says? What do you got in that bottle? It's. Oh, my goodness, take them away, take them away. Throw that stuff out. Oh, but I've been studying them. And I've been feeding them for months. Feeding Anne? 
You take that junk and dump it out in the ash can and come back here. What about the two bottles of ass in your room, Bill? Now listen, you go right up and get them and dump them out with the rest of this junk. Dirty little snitch. Come on, Elmer. Get Mr. Hart to see what you want me to do to Oh, Billy, dear. As long as you're going upstairs, will you take Mark to sit with you? You mustn't be too harsh with him, Henry. He's only a child. Well, after all, Horace has had a mother's care. Miss Martha, you may take the plates out, but leave the coffee. That's the way I always does it, Miss Lily. Martha doesn't seem to catch on very quickly, does she? Mm. I catch on to some things mighty quick, Miss Lily. Reminds me, Bill. I knew there was something else I wanted to talk to you about. Horace Clay. A in effort. Plus B in work. A in conduct. William Peck. C in effort. B in work. C in conduct. C in conduct. How did it happen? Oh, some kid poked me when we were at recess, so I poked him back, and I got C. Well, that's the third fight that you've had in the past two months. Of course, it doesn't reflect much credit on me to have everyone in town saying that, that Peck's boy is always in trouble. You must know how it makes me feel. Horace. you get ready for church. Yes, Mother. Excuse me, Uncle Henry. And you too, Billy, dear. Oh, Bill. Uh, just a minute. Sit down. Excuse me, please. Bill, I... Maybe I shouldn't have given you that fall down before Aunt Lily and Horace. That's all right. Something's licking the tar out of you. What's doing it? Nothing. You can't tell me that. You're not pulling well with Horace, are you? No. You not only refuse to play with him, but you influence the rest of the gang to him. I can't help it if they don't like him. I don't see why not. Maybe he's not like the other boys you play with. But he seems like a good kid. And he's smart, too. Well, he's smart, all right. The trouble is, uh, you don't try to understand him, Bill. I don't want to understand him. Oh, it's up to you to get along with him. You've got to bear with him as long as he and Aunt Lily are living with us. How much longer are they going to stay? No, I don't like your attitude. Guys, we, we don't seem to get together at all anymore. You know as well as I do that ever since Aunt Lily's been here, why, she's done everything in her power to make things pleasant for us.
I think that a guy who's president of the Excelsior Club could handle him in a situation like this. Don't you? I tell you, Dad, I try to be friends with him, but I don't know. Uh, you can't tell me about kids. They're all alike. Scrapping one minute and friends the next. You know the trouble with you? You're trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. Now, beat it upstairs and get ready for church. And step on it, will you? Okay, go. sort of a dirty trick on you, and I wanted to tell you about it. You can't tell me anything. Well, I had a talk with Dad, and I told him that you can't tell me anything. Horace! I'm coming, Mother! Hey, Horace! room all afternoon do any good? He wouldn't say anything except that, that he didn't do it. I don't know what's gotten into him. He never lied to me before. Playing a trick like that on me. Why, uh, don't you let me try to work it out. I want you to be happy, Henry. And I might be able to... to wake William up. That may be a good idea, Lily. We'll talk about it later. I'm going over to see Watkins for a few minutes on business. I'll see you at the theater at 7. I told him he couldn't come out. You keep your nose out of my business, and I'll beat it. Certainly like this room. Well, forget it, because it won't do you no good. I was just thinking. If you trade rooms with me, I'll tell Uncle Henry the truth about the ants. You keep quiet. You made enough trouble between Dad and me already. Why don't you and your mother get wise to yourselves and pack up and go home? 
Why don't you get wise to yourself? We're here to stay. You ought to know by now that nobody wants you. You don't belong here. We have as much right here as you have. In fact, more. Well, you have, huh? Yes, we have. How do you figure that out? You don't know. I'm not going to tell you. Well, don't tell me what I care. At least I've got a mother. I know who my father was. And I know who my father is. It's what you think. You cut that out. Cousin or no cousin, I'll take a suck at you. You're not my cousin. You're no relation to any of us. You're an orphan. They got you out of an orphan's home. Oh, you're goofy. Am I? Well, I can prove it. You don't believe me? Ask my mother. Go on. Why don't you find out for yourself, then? Find out if it isn't true. Find out if they didn't get you from an orphan asylum. Ask your dad. life without a receipt book and then she come along. Two teaspoons of vanilla. Where's Dad, Martha? Hmm? Oh, it's you. Where's Dad? And your dad? He done gone downtown for something. Ain't living going down to meet him after a while and they go into the movies. Are you sure? Is I sure? Is I ever lied to you? Oh, well, I mean, when will he be back? Now, how should I know when he be back? How should I know? And don't start bothering me. I got too much on my mind now. Well, where'd she put that current jam? How long you been with Dad and me, Martha? Oh, near about 15 years, long before you was born, sonny. Then you must have been here when I was born. We wasn't here then, Miss Living in Greeley. Oh, God. Then you do remember. Why, of course I remember, child. I got a memory like an elephant. Billy, honey, you were the cutest, pinkest, prettiest little baby I ever saw. And your mammy and daddy sure was crazy about you. And I was, too. <laughs> Ain't that something? Yes, but... Go on now. Get on out of the way. Get on out. Get... Somebody's been talking, and somebody's been talking too much. Afternoon. Oh, I've been around. Say, Doc, did you ever run an 
was an asylum. Was I ever in an asylum? Yeah. Now, that ain't nice, kid. I don't like that. Accusing a man of my standing with being in a crazy house? Oh, you don't get me right, Zup. I mean an orphan asylum. Oh, you mean orphan home? Not the mouth. This is kind of right. <laughs> I didn't get you right on account of the store. Stop a minute, will you, Zup? This is awful important to me. Sure. Speak your mind. Well, what I want to know is, if a kid's born in an orphan home, how does he find out? Well, I'll tell you. You see, when me and my three brothers and two sisters was all orphans, we was in an orphan home, and I was quite a character. As a matter of fact, a fellow wrote a play about my brother and me. Did you ever hear about it? It was called The Two Orphans. Hey, Duffy! Well, did you find out? As I started to tell you. Skip it, sir. Hmm? Skip it. Never mind. Mother wants those flowers for her corsage. I'll be getting them soon when I'm through here. Well, you better get them now if you know what's good for you. All right. Here he is, Mother. I told him, but he wouldn't do it. Mr. Duffy, what about my flowers? Yes, ma'am. I was just going after them. Well, I should think you'd have plenty of time before this. You know, ma'am, the later you pick them, the longer they last. Seems to me that instead of wasting your time building dog houses, you might apply yourself to the garden with better results. Well, since you're feeling that way about it, maybe I ought to tell you I'm building the house on my own time. You needn't be insolent about it. I don't mean to be insolent, lady. Mr. Duffy, we won't need you here anymore. Well, that's all right. But you know, Mr. Peck, he hired me, and I kind of think it's up to him to fire me. You're discharged. You know, Mrs. Vanderbilt tried to fire me once, but I got to reasoning with her. In a couple of minutes, she said to me, Duffy, I beg your pardon. Go back to them horses. Now, if you want to apologize. Oh, well, there was no future here anyway.
Well, I'll say one thing for Duffy. Don't be a dog house anyway. He's that fresh with my mother and she fired him. He's leaving in the morning. Another thing, we miss those cock and bull stories of his. Nobody asked you to come and listen to him. I wouldn't want to waste my time on a tramp like that. Why, you don't see me stuck with 40% in an arithmetic examination. Well, that you're doing pretty good for a kid who comes from an orphan asylum. You take that back or I'll sock you one. Why don't you try it? You better learn to duck. Hey, Bill. What is this? Well, this is a fine mess. What's this all about, young man? And I assured Uncle Henry it would be perfectly safe to leave you two alone. I'm ashamed of you. You especially, Horace. You don't know how you've hurt Mother. And I thought I could trust you. I'm sorry, Mother. I'm sorry, Uncle Henry. You're, you're all smeared with blood. You're a sight. Go in and wash up. Come, Billy. Well, at least you might be civil to Aunt Lily. Don't, Henry, please. He didn't mean it. Did you, Billy, dear? Why don't you answer? Or you apologize to Aunt Lily. I won't apologize. Well, what do you mean by that? I won't apologize, that's all. Well, that isn't all. Now, listen. This is serious. Either you do what I say, Bill, or, or we're through. You wouldn't talk that way to me if... If, if what? If what? I can't understand you at all anymore. If what? What are you talking about? You're not the boy that I could talk to man to man. Dad, could I have a little talk with you? Kind of private-like? Now, what is all this privacy about? Aunt Lily is just as much interested in you as I am. Anything you've got to say to me, you can say before her. Oh, what's the use? Don't be stubborn, Billy, dear. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? I'm going to bed. Henry, leave him alone. I'll think of something.
What's up now? Tell them. Hey, that ain't no way to act. Come on, snap out of it. <laughs> that reminds me, you know, I ran away once myself when I was a kid about your age. Went to sea in a foremaster, going around the horn. Let me see. It was in 61 or 62. Oh, dear, the bulldog. I remember it like it was yesterday. We were trekked off at Sumter, and General Lee rolled up, and he says to me, Duff, he says. They don't want me anymore, Duff. They don't want me. Oh, you were just imagining that, son. No, he said he was through with me, I tell you. I'm surprised that you've taken him so serious like that. Why, I ain't never seen a father and son so close. But, but I ain't a son. They took me out of an orphan's home. <laughs> Did I ever tell you of the time I was cooking for the king? It was during the Boer War in South Africa. Gee, we'll have swell times together. You sure you want to go, Bill? Well, you said I could go with you, didn't you? Sure. This Clay said some things to me I didn't like. You didn't see me run away and hang my head. No, sir. I gave her a chance to apologize, and then I walked. Like that. Bill, if you want to be a success in life, don't run away from your problems. Where would Dempsey be if he was afraid of Big Jess Willer? Or Lindbergh be if he was afraid to cross the Atlantic Ocean? Or President Roosevelt if he was afraid to tackle the Depression? Come on, Doug. Let's get going. Bed hasn't been slept in. He hasn't been here all night. Oh, where is he? Where could he have gone? Well, there's no sense standing here talking about it. I want you to go, but not to stay. I want you to go back and clean up. Don't you see, Duff? Belong. Belong? In my opinion, a kid that won't fight for his rights ain't worth his salt. 
I bet you're running away to slick you. He didn't lick me, and I ain't running away because of that, neither. Well, it certainly doesn't look like it. Well, you don't believe that, do you, Duff? No. no. But when Horace tells the gang that he licked you, what are they going to think if you ain't here to defend yourself? Oh, they won't even listen to him. I bet you are running away because Horace licked you. You think so? You think so, Duff? Well, I'll show you. Wait a minute, Billy. Wait a minute. But why don't you do something about it? We will do something about it. You take Horace to his own room. But... Please, Lily. tell you? No, she didn't. But that's why Horace and me had them fight. Well, there won't be any more fights. Mother and I were married. We wanted a, a baby, a baby boy, and we didn't have one. We got older and were lonely, and, and then we found you. Well, why don't you pick me out particular? Because the minute we saw you, we knew that you were the one we wanted. 
Gee, Keith, how many kids were in that place? About 50. 50 kids? And you knew right away you wanted me? That's right, son. Gee, Wilkers, that's better than being born. Well, you picked me. If I'd have been born regular, you would have had to take me, even if I was a Chinaman. Or a wild Indian. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> You'll be numptious. What? Horrid. Don't tell me you forgot to die. Oh. And you ain't sorry you picked me? So sorry that I think you and I are going fishing Saturday. Just you and me? Just you and I. And Duffy. Say, you know, that was a tough break about Butch. Hmm? We needed a big guy on the line. Yeah? Yeah. The capital of Oregon is Salem. <laughs> 